John Davidson Rockefeller is considered the richest man in history. He was the first man to become a billionaire. In 1913, his wealth at his peak was almost 3% of the United States GDP. Today, 3% of United States GDP is equivalent to $760 billion. No one in the entire history of the world had ever achieved such a massive fortune as far as we know. In 1870, Rockefeller founded Standard Oil Company, which was one of the world's first and largest multinational corporations. The company controlled over 90% of the United States oil market, which it maintained for over 20 years. In 1911, due to its monopoly and price manipulation, the company was forced to break up under the Sherman Antitrust Act. The company was broken into 34 separate entities and many of its successor entities are even operating today. Out of them are Exxon and Mobil, now Exxon Mobil, Chevron, BP, Marathon Oil, and Amoco are all successors of Standard Oil. Today, combined revenues of these entities is over $600 billion, and they employ over 166,000 employees. Want to know how Rockefeller created such a huge monopoly? Watch the full video. John Rockefeller, the first billionaire in the world. We at Business Chronicles tell the stories of extraordinarily successful people. Please subscribe to our channel to help us in making more videos. In 1839, Rockefeller was born in Richford, New York. He was the second child of William Avery Rockefeller and Eliza Davidson. He had five siblings, an older sister named Lucy, a younger one named Mary, and three brothers, William Jr., Franklin, and Francis. Rockefeller's father, William Avery, first worked as a lumberman before becoming a traveling salesman. He sold health products that he claimed could cure several diseases. His mother Eliza was a devout Baptist and a dedicated homemaker. She worked hard to maintain stability at home and enshrined in Rockefeller some of his early lessons in business, including the importance of working hard and a disdain for willful waste. Growing up, Rockefeller did a fair amount of household chores. He also made some money rearing turkeys, selling candy and potatoes, and giving loans to his neighbors. Rockefeller went to school at Oswego Academy in Oswego, New York, but his family moved often. He later transferred to Central High School when the family moved to Cleveland, Ohio. Rockefeller showed an early talent for math and was active in the debate club. After high school, Rockefeller joined Folsom's Commercial College in 1855, where he took a 10-week course in business. He learned double-entry bookkeeping, banking, mercantile customs, and exchange. Afterward, he went looking for a job. In 1855, at age 16, Rockefeller went looking for a job in Cleveland as a bookkeeper. At the time, Cleveland was small and there were not many employment opportunities. Rockefeller was not immediately successful but was persistent, even going back to the same firms three times. His persistence paid off when he was hired as a bookkeeper at a produce shipper, Hewitt and Tuttle, in September 1855. Hardworking, diligent, and honest, Rockefeller managed to impress upon his managers early. He worked long hours, refused to write false bills of lading, and pursued overdue accounts persistently until collection. He earned $31 a month in his first year at the company. This went up to $50 monthly the next year and then $58 monthly in his third year. Rockefeller saved as much as he could but also donated to his church and a charity. In 1859, Rockefeller partnered with Maurice Clark to go into the produce commission business. They each put up $2,000 in capital, with Rockefeller committing $800 in savings and borrowing $1,000 from his father at 10% interest. They formed Clark and Rockefeller in 1859. In their first year, the partnership made a profit of $4,400. In their second year, their profit was $17,000. Rockefeller traveled extensively throughout Ohio to secure new business and then borrowed heavily from banks to make shipments. Towards the end of the American Civil War, however, the Midwest emerged as a major grain producer together with the Northwest, so the railroads set up routes to capitalize on the movement of these commodities. This compromised Cleveland's significance as a major transportation port along Lake Erie, hurting Rockefeller's produce commission business. He began researching a new business to venture into. 
By 1863, he had discovered it, oil refining. Developments in oil drilling and refining produced a boom period for oil with neighboring Pennsylvania producing the vast majority of the world's oil. Oil drilling was a wasteful business, but refining had attractive margins of $5 to $8 per $13 barrel. Rockefeller and his partner pivoted to oil refining. In 1863, they built a refinery in an industrial area in Cleveland called The Flats and brought a chemist, Samuel Andrews, and Clark's two brothers into the business. It was initially called Andrews Clark and Company. Utilizing his business acumen, Rockefeller swiftly set off to build a sustainable business. At the time, refineries kept 60% of the refined oil, kerosene to use for lighting, and threw away the rest including about 10% gasoline and 5-10% to naphtha. Critical of wastage, Rockefeller kept the kerosene, used gasoline to power the refinery, and the remaining waste to make paraffin wax, petroleum jelly, and lubricating oil. He shipped naphtha to gas plants. In 1865, Rockefeller paid the Clark brothers $72,500 to take their shares and assume control of the business. He was 24 years old at the time. He began borrowing heavily from banks, improving his refining process top-down and reinvesting profits into the business. In 1866, he brought in his brother William Jr. to the business and built a new refinery in Cleveland called Standard Works. Rockefeller hired plumbers at his refineries to lay out pipes and acquired his own cooperative shop to make his own barrels, bringing down their costs by half. William Jr. later moved to New York to establish an office to handle oil exports. In 1867, Rockefeller partnered with Henry Flagler, an old business companion, to form Rockefeller, Andrews and & Flagler. Together they built larger permanent refineries in Cleveland with huge holding tanks for storing crude and refined oil. They also manufactured their own sulfuric acid for oil purification and acquired warehouses in New York City and boats operating along the East and Hudson Rivers to ferry oil. The partners even pioneered shipping oil through tank cars. By 1868, Rockefeller, Andrews and & Flagler was the biggest oil refinery in Ohio. In January 1870, Rockefeller dissolved Rockefeller, Andrews and & Flagler to form Standard Oil of Ohio. He set out to make the refinery more profitable and expand its oil shipments. He negotiated preferential rates with Pennsylvania railroads because of the large volume of oil cargo he moved. However, this move was fiercely opposed by independent oil well owners, partly because it led to an increase in freight charges. The state of Pennsylvania put an end to the arrangement, restoring non-preferential rates. Persistent in his goals, Rockefeller switched to acquiring rivals. In 1872, he acquired 22 of his 26 competitors in Cleveland. In the following years, he acquired more rivals, including in other states, and by the end of the 1870s, Rockefeller controlled 90% of the oil refining market in the United States. In 1879, the state of Pennsylvania indicted Rockefeller on monopoly charges. Other states followed suit, causing Rockefeller great strain in the 1880s. The media also began portraying him in a bad light. All these greatly affected his health. He developed anxiety and had trouble sleeping at night. In 1882, Rockefeller formed Standard Oil Trust through which he could control his vast empire which now included 41 companies in different states. It also included 20,000 domestic wells, 5,000 tank cars, 4,000 miles of pipeline, and more than 100,000 employees. Rockefeller then moved the company's headquarters to New York City at 26 Broadway, ventured into natural gas production, and established a presence in Europe. In 1890, the Sherman Antitrust Act came into law. States vigorously applied the law forcing the breakup of Standard Oil Trust in 1892 into 34 companies. Some of these were the precursors to ExxonMobil, Chevron, and Pennzoil. Rockefeller maintained his interest in the separate companies under Standard Oil. Rockefeller spent the 1890s acquiring crude oil wells in Ohio, West Virginia, and Indiana. He also ventured into the iron ore business but sold these interests to U.S. Steel under J.P. Morgan in 1901. 
In the 1890s, Rockefeller's health issues deteriorated. He developed digestive problems, lost all his facial hair, and even suffered moderate depression. In 1896, he stopped going to the office daily. In 1897, he retired aged 58 years, leaving John Archibald to run Standard Oil. He retained his nominal title of president until 1911. An audit of Standard Oil in 1902 revealed Rockefeller was worth $200 million, about 2% of the US GDP at the time. This wealth would balloon to a peak of $900 million before World War I. Adjusted for inflation, his wealth is considered the largest ever amassed by a person in North America. Rockefeller was a philanthropic person. Early in his career as a bookkeeper, he gave 6% of his earnings to church-related charitable activities. As he progressed in his career, he increased his contributions to 10% of his earnings. In line with the Baptist Church's mission to establish schools and colleges across North America, Rockefeller gave millions to higher education. He made considerable donations to the University of Chicago, Denison University, Spelman College, and Central Philippine University in the Philippines. He also founded Rockefeller University and gave significant donations to universities like Harvard, Yale, Brown, Columbia, and Wellesley. Beyond education, Rockefeller donated to YMCAs, YWCAs, and medical causes and was instrumental in almost eradicating yellow fever and hookworm. In addition, he donated to relief efforts following the 1906 San Francisco earthquake. In 1913, Rockefeller established the Rockefeller Foundation to support causes in medical training, public health, social research, food production, and the arts. The foundation aided World War I relief efforts and endowed Johns Hopkins School of Hygiene and Public Health. In his lifetime, Rockefeller donated about $550 million. Rockefeller died in his home on May 23, 1937 of arteriosclerosis. He was aged 97. Rockefeller had modest beginnings, but later he earned a massive fortune. The biggest reason he achieved his fortune was that he got into a booming industry. These days, oil was in high demand. Automobile industry was booming. Aviation industry was rising. All these industries needed oil. Another reason for this huge success was that Rockefeller was ruthless. He was famous for destroying his competitors. He manipulated the prices of oil so that his competitors are bankrupted, and he acquired his competitors at a cheap rate, thus forming the biggest monopoly we had ever seen. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel to watch more videos like this.